Hello, beautiful souls. I hope you're all staying well and warm and grounding, even though it's cold outside. It's really important, especially right now. Uh, today's topic, spiritual bypassing. Have you heard of this? Do you know what it is? Are you doing it? Let's dig in. So spiritual bypassing has been, it's not a new term. Uh, it's been around for a long time. The actions and um, the things the traits, the characteristics of spiritual bypassing, I'm going to go over, but I want you to understand that again, I have said this time and time again, the content that I put out on my channel is divinely led. I'm really like always on call to mother Sophia source creator, the archangels, uh, they send it masters to put out a timely message that, that they express a need for. Today is that message and the person, the being that is most frustrated is mother Sophia. She knows all she understands how we feel, whether we speak it out loud, if we're just thinking it, it doesn't matter. She knows, she knows what's in our heart. And we were having a conversation, my, my soul sister, Leah and I, who you see on what's up Wednesdays with Leah and Lucy. So we were having a conversation. And Mother Sophia gave a message to Leah and I, it, it was surrounding someone who is involved in spiritual bypassing, but the, the context was used, not the, the term spiritual bypassing. And so I responded, it's a chronic issue. It's a chronic problem. This is nothing new. And Mother Sophia came right into me and said, Lucy, you're right. This is a chronic problem. And I want you to address it on your channel. And I don't want you to pull any punches. So this is your trigger warning. You are likely going to be triggered if you are participating in spiritual bypassing. And I want you to accept the trigger as your aha lightning bolt moment that you need to get serious about your soul evolution and your shadow work and your growth because you are derailing yourself from your soul path. Plain and simple, plain and simple. Let's get in. This is the scenario. It's played out time and time again. Of course, this is not anything specific, um, but it's like a general scenario that we see play out time and time again. So you're, uh, you're a part of, are you, you subscribe to some sort of social space group and you were, you were resonating with their messages. You were resonating with all the content they were putting out and they helped you awaken, right? They were saying what you needed to, what you needed to hear. They were giving you the mirror effect of this message is for me. You know, it totally resonates. And, and I get that. I get messages about my content like that. People have that, that aha moment when the message is for them, the frequency invites it in and that's how it works. So you're cruising along. You think you're with this amazing social space and it is until it isn't. And that's unfortunately how it works. Um, so you get, you get into a message one day, maybe it's a video, maybe it's a post, um, whatever the context is. And something about that makes your internal being feel off. It just doesn't set well with you. Like everything else felt like it was literally meant for you. And this message couldn't feel more removed from the energy that you are in right now. But because you have an affinity for this group or the person that is leading the group or whatever the case may be, you dismiss that intuition. You dismiss the initial response to the off feeling, to the off content, and you look away. So we are then in that moment choosing to reject our intuition. And it's usually one of these things you really like them or you have some sense of loyalty to them because uh, they were like, they were like the group that you really bonded with when you first started to awaken or you have them like on a pedestal, like you've been 
having a little bit of, of envy of worshiping them, maybe, um, where they, you felt like they could do no wrong, like whatever, however that looked for you, you've had them elevated instead of looking at them like a peer. And this, this is the moment where if you're doing that, if you know now, cause you're hearing someone say it specifically that you're guilty of engaging in this spiritual bypassing. I want you to stop right now what you're doing. And I want you to reach up and take the fish hook out of your lip because you have been caught. You've been caught on the bait. They reeled you in to then manipulate you and pull you off your soul path. And that is a malevolent energy at work there. So, so spiritual bypassing defined, just, I like to put the definition out there. So whenever you're like, what's spiritual bypassing? And you go Google it and you're like, huh, I never heard of that before. Refers to the tendency to use spiritual ideas, beliefs, or practices to avoid confronting or resolving complex psychological issues, emotional pain, and unfinished developmental tasks. This presents itself in these ways. Avoidance. Spiritual bypassing involves sidestepping or denying the reality of difficult emotions, experiences, or situations rather than facing and working through them. OMG. I have seen this so many times. And the fact of the matter is, whenever you hear about timeline jumping and, and you hear someone say, we jump timelines thousands of times a day, every time you make a decision, this is what we're talking about. In the moment that you recognize something is off and your intuition is cueing your body some way, you recoil, it makes you nauseous. It gives you a headache, something that's a negative reaction to what's coming to you. And then you dismiss it. That was your timeline jump down a timeline because you did not choose the higher consciousness timeline, which is to stand in your sovereignty, speak your truth and be in your, in your integrity. You chose the, the less confrontational route and you chose to not acknowledge your body cue, your intuition. So in that moment where you had your free will choice to decide what to do, you chose a lower timeline instead of a higher timeline. And it is just that easy. Another way that we see this is spiritual rationalization. Individuals may use spiritual explanations or justifications to explain away their emotional pain rather than engaging with it directly. And this is where you'll see a lot of people that have a very large followings and they live in their victimhood. They live in their, like they get views, which generates their payoff. And it doesn't have to mean currency. Some are in this for the attention. Some are in this for the energy that they're siphoning from you, but they're truly not in it to heal. And they're truly not in it to leave victimhood behind. So they exploit it and it becomes their flag that they, that they fly re very freely. Resistance to emotional processing, AKA shadow work. Emotional processing is the process you go through when you do shadow work. Feeling is healing. Running from your feelings is running from healing. If you're not getting better, you're not tapped into the true source of the pain. The original first cut. How's that go? The first cut's deepest. That's where you have to heal. That's where you have to go back to. So you have to feel it. So what if it, it makes you cry? So what if it makes you feel hurt again? You're not going to feel that forever. You're going to feel that for like 20 or 30 minutes. And then you're going to realize, you know what? That doesn't, I lived, I survived, feel better. 
because I let that energy out. Now I'm going to journal what I'm thinking about that event. I'm going to love everybody that had something to do with that event. I'm going to forgive everybody that had something to do with that event, including myself. And I'm going to give gratitude to the whole kitten caboodle. I'm going to let that shit go because it has been hanging on to me for too long. That is a process of shadow work. That is facing the fear and facing the feelings head on. That is you being your best friend. Spiritual bypassing can involve suppressing or diverting your attention away from emotional experiences rather than allowing oneself to fully feel in order to heal. You got to feel it. You got to let yourself feel it. And I don't mean just like, oh, yeah, that makes me want to cry. I think I'm going to stop there. No, 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 no. You're diving head first into this event and you're going back exactly where you were when the initial heartache started and you're going to feel it and you may feel things because you're giving yourself permission to feel it that bring up a whole nother level of recognition of what actually needs to be healed here, where the triggers may be coming from somewhere associated, but it's not the real source of the pain. You've been sidestepping that you've been diverting that, but now you're facing it head on. Now you're going to heal. Now you're going to see things open up in your life. You're not going to be on that negative loop revolving victimhood, which is exactly where the controllers that were love us to be because we are in a fear state and we are full of low vibration of guilt, shame, blame, pain, frustration. And we do ourselves a huge disservice. Usually no one is doing this to us because number one, no one can do your shadow work for you. Also, no one can stop you from doing your shadow work. It's, it's all within you. I was really trying to um, not do this video again. I felt like we've talked about it and we have. I've touched on many, many, many different videos. I've touched on this aspect, but I didn't come right out and go, you know, you're spiritually bypassing your shadow work, aren't you? And so I, I'm really trying to get those that have been sidestepping that to take accountability today because it's these squeaky wheels who are wondering why things aren't any better in their life. And they're wondering why things haven't changed. And they're wondering why they don't feel any better because you're not healing. You're stuck. You're stagnant. And it's by your own will. It's your own free will choices, which are going to be honored. Your guides, your archangels, source, Mother Sophia, they're not going to come in here and save you from yourself. They're going to assist you. You have to, at, when you ask for clarity, when you ask for guidance, when you ask for assistance, they are not going to take you by the hand and lead you down the path. It's the other way around. You extend your hand to them and they extend the hand of compassion and they say, let's walk this walk together. It's not going to be fun, but we're going to get through it. Let's face this head on, but you have to take the first step. You have to love yourself enough to take the first step. So when we were talking about this being a chronic issue, I want to get into that a little bit. That's a chronic issue for the collective. We see it everywhere. We see it everywhere. When you are realizing that members of your vortex, and I say that like your inner circle, like your, your go-to crew, when you realize that you have ignored the signs that karmic beings in your vortex should have been let go a long time ago because it doesn't feel comfortable. You don't want to hurt somebody's feelings or you don't want things to change to that extent. Take responsibility for that choice. You're choosing to keep karmic people in your life that are there to continually teach you karmic lessons. That means the chaos is not going to stop. It's going to actually escalate because the universe is going to want you to feel so much friction that you want to climb out of your skin because you have to be motivated to change your situation. 
if your situation is so frustrating and so uncomfortable and so much friction, it's up to you to change your situation. Remove the people in your life that are karmic and teaching you karmic lessons over and over again. How do you do that? You learn the freaking lesson. When you learn the lesson and you no longer buy into that, they drop away. They realize the game is up. They're not going to get energy from you anymore. They're not going to bypass you anymore. They're not going to derail you anymore. And they're going to move on to something else. And their point in time in your life is over with. You've learned the lesson. When you move that being out, you make room for the frequency connected light beings to come in and shower you with all the positive high vibrations of love, kindness, compassion, empathy, respect, forgiveness, gratitude. If that's what you truly want in life, you got to clean up your mess that you've made. We are all responsible to a degree for every single negative karmic being in our life that's still there today. If you have not learned the lesson that they've been trying to show you repeatedly, you keep making excuses for them or you keep bypassing the cues that your body is telling you to get rid of them, it is only your fault. And I don't mean to say it's your fault, but it truly is. You have a choice. And if you're not making that choice, don't look to anybody else to fix it for you because it's not for anyone else to fix. You have to do it yourself. Mother Sophia is very clear about this. We are called right now to be our own best friend, self-compassion, self-love, self-respect, self-healing. When we do that for ourselves, number one, we're setting a hell of an example for everybody else. And we raise the frequency of our own core energy, which helps all the beings around us find their own place. So you're not saving people because you're actively going over there and telling them what to do, even though you're not doing it for yourself. No, you're saving people because you're saving yourself, right? You have to work on yourself first and completely and fully heal LFG, love, forgiveness, and gratitude to all parties involved. If you're not doing that, you have to stop with the, I need to save everybody mentality. You got to save yourself. You can't give what you don't have. If you haven't given yourself love and compassion and healing and kindness, what are you actually giving someone else? Vapors. It's false. There's no energy behind it because you don't have it to give because you haven't given it to, to yourself. You have to be true and authentic. Stand in your truth. Stand in your sovereignty. These are not new messages. This is just a more direct message because people are bypassing the message. Stop the insanity. Stop doing the same things you've been doing your entire freaking life that has caused all these karmic beings to flock to you to try to get you to wake up. Take accountability of who they are. Understand what you're working with. How many of these people in your vortex don't even have a soul and you're wanting to risk your entire soul path to save them? Number one, it's not for you to save them or anyone. You are meant to heal yourself, check off the boxes of your soul contract, evolve beyond that and ascend. And in doing so, if you do it the way that you are led to do it from the divine, you lead by an example, you set a course, an energy course that leaves a wake of positivity behind you. And it allows for others to follow in your footsteps. And that's how you help people around you. That's how you help them. You help them by showing them how to help themselves. And then they show somebody else how to help themselves. And somebody else down the street goes, you know what? What's changed about you? Like, this is a, a whole new vibe I'm getting from you what's changed and you speak your truth and you go you know what I realized that I had all these chaos makers coming into my vortex because I was being resistant to the messages I was being resistant to the lesson but not anymore I'm really keen now I've 
done the work. I've gone back. I can recognize it in myself before I recognize it in anybody else. When I catch myself being judgmental, I catch it and I go, nope, that's low vibrational. I don't mean to do that. LFG, the whole situation. When I catch myself projecting my own fear onto someone else's situation, I have to stop and realize that fear, that fear in me needs to be addressed. I need to go back and realize why I even have that fear. Because fear is false evidence appearing real. There, fear is an illusion, just like death. When you fear something, the best thing to do is face it head on because it will crumble. It will crumble. If you aren't actually doing what is in your highest and best good for you, every single moment that you have free will choices come your way and you're, you really are called to check into your higher self in a space of neutrality. If you're not neutral, then you ask someone who is, is this in my highest and best good to do this? Very rarely do we have anything come up in our day-to-day -day life that we have to make a decision right now. Most of the time we have a moment and you take that moment and you are working smarter, not harder, right? So you just reach out to phone or friend, phone or friend that's had a QET session. Can you check and see if this is in my highest and best good? It may be something you've been doing every single day of your freaking life. And so it just comes natural to you. And all of a sudden today, it feels way more uphill than it's ever felt before. As the universe telling you, you've outgrown that habit. It no longer serves your highest and best good. You're confirming what you feel with someone else who's not emotionally attached to this habit. And they come back and go, I get it. It's not in your highest and best good. Then let it go. Take the steps to let that go. The more you clear out non-serving ways, aka bad habits, the more room you have for the frequency matched ways, habits, new habits to form. If you make more room in your schedule, in your life, for things that serve your highest and best good, you are further aligning to your soul path along your ascension track with your soul contract to the divine. And that's the name of the game. None of us are perfect. None of us have this figured out 100%. We are all just trying to help each other along as best we can. But this is a chronic issue. If you have battled this and, and got on top of it, what we are called to do is call each other on our crap. Stand in your sovereignty. Do it lovingly. But, you know, say something. I've seen you spin your wheels about this event, this person, this place for far too long. Let's just call it what it is. You've outgrown it. This person taught you these valuable lessons. Let's let LFG this entire situation and let it go because it's not serving you. It's actually a disservice to you. If you are feeling overwhelmed in everything that's happened right now, I want you to understand that spiritual bypassing is not your friend. Putting off your shadow work doesn't make it go away. It keeps coming back around. And the universe is going to keep showing you in bigger and bigger ways. Is that what you want? Like, literally, is that what you want? You want the fire to get bigger? Let's put out these dumpster fires. Let's face our fear. Let's accept that we should change. Because what we've been doing is for the person we used to be, and we're no longer that energy body. We have evolved. Accept with clarity and gratitude the assistance from your spirit team and make the changes you need to make to align fully with the divine. And that means you got to face your fears. You got to do your shadow work. You got to get your journaling done. And you got to LFG everything and everyone that has anything to do with a painful event in your life that you soul contracted. I hope this message finds you well. Check out my Rumble channel for the latest Can't Make This Shit Up. Those videos are just cracking me up. And they're very cathartic. And I'm, I'm enjoying making them. I hope you are too. Drop a comment below if you're struggling, if you have questions. Definitely check out violetlotusenergy.com. That is our site. We have lots of offerings from many beautiful divine feminine ascendant masters, divine masculine ascendant masters, and overall, the archangels that are always there for us, 
when we're ready to take a step, they hold our hand. Have a great day.